We're going to begin with um, Ms. Ma Maha Abdallah, which is the legal research um, expert on uh, human rights uh, internalization in the faculty of uh, Andred. So please, uh, can you explain to us, uh, Ms. Abdallah, your presentation? Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just need to uh, share with you a PowerPoint presentation. Can you see it well? Yeah, thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, really a pleasure to be speaking with you all today. And thank you also for inviting me to uh, participate in the hearing on this really important and groundbreaking development to hopefully establish the Catalan Center for Business and Human Rights. And today I will be sharing with you one perspective as to why such center is necessary to challenge corporate impunity, especially in situations of conflict and occupation, such as the one in Palestine, the one that I've been working on the most in relation to corporate accountability and business and human rights. So in uh, the case of Palestine, we have for more than 75 years, the Palestinian people have endured an ongoing Nakba of dispossession and oppression that has denied them the right to self-determination and sovereignty over natural resources. And this has meant for decades, uh, well-documented, widespread and systematic human rights violations, grave breaches of international human rights and humanitarian law, war crimes and crimes against humanity that have largely gone without, un uh, without any accountability for perpetrators. And central to all of this have been Israeli state-owned, private and multinational corporations that have enabled, facilitated and profited from Israel's objectives to conquer, remove and replace, also with near total impunity to these corporations. And in the next two parts of, uh, of my intervention, I will focus on corporate involvement in three key manifestations of the occupation, the settlement enterprise, the annexation wall, and the killing of Palestinians. In relation to the Israeli settlements, there are now around 300 illegal Israeli settlements in the West Bank and Jerusalem, with more than 720,000 Israeli Jewish settlers living there. These settlements are built on privately and publicly owned Palestinian land that Israel strategically appropriates under different pretexts and through military orders. The settlements, their maintenance and expansion are illegal under international law as also reaffirmed by the UN Security Council, the UN General Assembly, and the International Court of Justice. Settlements violate directly and indirectly numerous rights of Palestinians, including the right to life, to self-determination, movement, health, livelihood, among others. And in practice, settlements mean unlawfully transferring the occupying power civilian population into occupied territory and unlawfully uh, and forcibly transferring and displacing the protected population, which is grave breach of the Fourth Geneva Convention and a war crime. The confiscation of land and property for the construction of these settlements is also considered unlawful appropriation. The expropriation and exploitation of natural resources for the settlements is also a violation of international humanitarian law and a war crime of pillage. And against this backdrop, we have Israeli and multinational corporations, including European financial institutions and business enterprises, who have played a key role in the maintenance and growth of settlements, contributed to and profited from human rights violations and crimes that are linked to the settlement enterprise. And we see these companies in residential, agricultural, tourism and industrial settlements across the entirety of the occupied West Bank and Jerusalem. Some of these companies, they work to unlawfully exploit and deplete Palestinian stone resources, for example, for the benefit of the Israeli settlement economy and uh, overall economy. This is, for example, seen in the case of the German Heidelberg cement, which has also uh, destroyed the environment throughout its activities and operations in the West Bank. 
Other companies like the Israeli Carmel Agrexco have actively contributed to a growing settler uh, agricultural sector, especially in the Jordan Valley of the occupied West Bank. And such a business provides packaging, ref refrigeration, transport, export services for fruits and vegetables and herbs that have been cultivated on stolen land using stolen water. And much of these product products, they end up in European supermarkets and international supermarkets as produce of Israel. Meanwhile, we have uh, other companies like the giant Israeli um, uh, water company, Mekarot, which has been at the forefront for decades in administering discriminatory water policies, pillaging Palestinian water for the benefit of the settler population and the occupying powers economy. Meanwhile, Palestinians struggle with water shortages, violations of their rights and uh, difficult uh, living conditions. In the settlement enterprise, we also see the involvement of uh, companies and financial institutions that are located in the Spanish state. Uh, in 2002, for example, uh, uh, San Standard was found to be among the top 10 creditors of loans to 50 companies involved with settlements, with about 9.46 billion US dollars between January 2019 and August 22. For example, San Standard is one of the biggest investors in CAF, which is based in the Spanish state, and which together with its Israeli uh, partner, Shapir, has been involved in the Jerusalem Light Rail uh, project. And this project basically provides a public tramway system to serve illegal settlements and, and settlers in the occupied territory. The project is in almost entirely built on, on, uh, on confiscated Palestinian land. Other companies that uh, Sand Standard is uh, a big investor in include CNH Industrial, which is incorporated in the Netherlands and whose heavy machinery is used in the construction of the wall, settlements, industrial zones, and to carry out demolitions against Palestinian homes and structures. There's also a uh, big investment uh, in, in eDreams, um, e -Dreams, which is a Spanish online travel agency that uh, through some of its brands like eDreams, Opodo and Travel Link, they advertise online uh, properties for rental or for holidays in settlements across the occupied territory. And as you can see on the screen, Sunstander also invests a lot in IBM, Man Group, Motorola Solutions and Siemens. Other Spanish uh, state-based companies uh, involved in the settlements include GMV, uh, Ineco and Salvat, and excuse me for my mispronunciation, but all three of these are also involved in the Jerusalem light rail project through the company CAF. For example, Salvat, which is headquartered in Barcelona, it was contracted by CAF to co-manage the transport of uh, the tram wagons uh, uh, to uh, from from Europe to uh, to the occupied territory, uh, in order to uh, construct the, the the Jerusalem light rail project. Looking at the annexation wall or the separation wall or the segregation wall, uh, it has been largely constructed on occupied Palestinian land. It restricts Palestinian freedom of movement, right to health, education, water, and many others. It represents the essence of fragmentation, segregation, institutional discrimination, and persecution against Palestinians. And its constructions and maintenance has required the involvement of hundreds of Israeli and multinational corporations over the years. This includes suppliers of concrete and fencing, producers of heavy machinery and high-tech equipment, landscapers and planners. These four companies are some of the com uh, some of these hundreds that have been involved. Perhaps you, uh, you could recognize some like Elbit Systems, which has been providing uh, detection systems for the wall and surveillance, especially around Jerusalem.
And since this is a situation of uh, military occupation that has been uh, going on for several decades now, we cannot ignore the companies that are in the arms and surveillance industries. Since 1948, uh, we have over 100,000 Palestinians who have been killed, whereas thousands others have sustained injuries over the years. In recent years, thousands of Palestinians have been killed in Israeli military offensives against the Gaza Strip, hundreds of whom are children. In the past 30 days of this month alone, Israel killed at least 30, uh, 35 Palestinians, including eight children. Over the years, Israel's arms industry has grown exponentially, while also closely linked to its military regime, while receiving large support from the United States and other allies, and in association with Israeli and international private corporations. All of this has motivated further attacks, killings, human degradation, and brutality in Palestine. While Israel is not a priority destination, exports from the Spanish state to Israel have grown since 2001, in contradiction to Spanish and European legislation. The Spanish Ministry of Defense also listed Israel in 2017 as the ninth biggest exporter of defense materials to Spain at nearly 30 million euro. It is also important to note that Israeli companies in this sector specifically have been establishing themselves in the Spanish state as an Israeli subsidiary with who is 100% Spanish to be able to access Spanish contracts, enjoy limited competition for bids, long-term collaborations, and access to international markets such as Latin America. These are some of the examples of companies like PAP Technos, which is an important supplier of the Spanish Armed Forces and is a subsidiary of an Israeli company called Rafael. There's also Magal Spain, which is the Spanish subsidiary of Israeli company Magal Security Systems that is involved in settlements, prison systems, checkpoints and others. Of course, many of these companies, they brand their products as comeback uh, combat proven or tested in the field, referring to their use against Palestinians, especially in the Gaza Strip. There is also the purchase and use of espionage and surveillance systems provided by Israeli companies. And one of the most famous examples that I'm sure you're all aware of uh, is uh, Pegasus, which is a software from uh, the Israeli company NSO Group Technologies that has been founded and operated largely by the Israeli military. And as you know, this has been instrumentalized to target journalists, human rights defenders, lawyers, parliamentarians, and politicians, including in the Spanish state and Catalonia. So, as we see in, in conflict-affected areas, corporations are often responsible for incentivizing and exacerbating violations of international human rights and humanitarian law. They can be involved and complicit in international crimes. And just like in Palestine, we also see this in Syria, in Yemen, in Western Sahara, and in other parts of the world. In such situations, businesses as private actors have responsibilities under international humanitarian law, especially when their activities and relationships are closely linked to the conflict. Accordingly, they have a responsibility to respect international law and human rights standards. And while there have been significant developments globally to ensure corporate respect for human rights and the environment, these remain inadequate. Access to remedy for those affected by corporate harm, especially in such contexts of conflict, is limited, if not impossible. The legally binding instrument on business and human rights that we see the negotiations going on at the United Nations, it offers a glimpse of hope for corporate accountability, especially as it incorporates language that is relevant to situations of conflict and occupation. However, the process is facing continued pushback, especially from states in the global north, which leaves its, its fate unknown. And meanwhile, at the EU level, the Corporate Due Diligence Directive has already been watered, watered down so much and continues to fail, uh, to fail to center rights holders. 
especially those mostly affected by European corporate activities and relationships in the global south. It does not take into account issues that are relevant uh, to uh, the right to self-determination, sovereignty over natural resources, and indigenous people's rights. And it certainly fails to recognize that some of the gravest business-related violations do occur in conflict-affected areas, and therefore fails to provide the necessary prevention and remedy. This is why it is essential for local and regional governments to take all necessary measures within their reach to protect human rights and the environment against corporate greed and violations and before it is too late. By establishing the centre, the Catalan Parliament is leading the way in the fight against corporate impunity and in regulating corporate power in peacetime and in conflict. The centre that will definitely not be able to address all corporate related violations, but it is definitely an innovative step in the right direction. Thank you so much.